السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى لا سيما المصطفى صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا My dear viewers, welcome to another live edition of Gardens of the Pious and today's episode is number 540 in the blessed series of Riyad al-Salihin by the blessed Imam Nawawi, may Allah have mercy on him. Today is going to be our third episode in studying chapter number 243, the chapter of being ordered to send the blessings and salutations upon Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the virtues and the wordings of doing so. Today, inshallah, the first hadith we have is hadith number 1401. Nasa'un hadith, which was collected by Abu Dawood, may Allah have mercy on him, the great companion Abu Hurairah, radiyallahu anhu, qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, la taj'alu qabri i'idan, wa sallu alayya, fa inna salatakum tablughuni haythu kuntum. Very beautiful hadith. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Do not make my grave a place of festivity, and supplicate Allah for me, and send your salutations upon me, for your supplication reaches me wherever you are. This hadith, brothers and sisters, answers a lot of questions. Question number one. Many people, whenever they're going for Umrah or Hajj, their relatives will ask them to do them a favor. Whenever you stand before the Prophet's grave, tell him, Muhammad, the son of so-and-so, Maryam, the daughter of so-and-so, is giving you salam, O Prophet of Allah. So it's an amana. You got to convey my salam to the Messenger of Allah. And you find people standing before the grave of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and saying, Peace and blessings be upon you from me, and peace and blessings be upon you from this person and that person, from my mom, from my aunt, from my neighbor, from... While the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, made it very clear, he said, And supplicate Allah for me, and send your peace and salutation upon me, since your supplication will reach me, no matter wherever you are. So, I don't have to be standing physically before the grave of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for my root sharif, for, for my supplication for the Prophet to reach him. It will reach him while I'm giving salam to him right now from the studio. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammad. Delivered innocently. And the angels who delivered the salam right now, they say, <coughs> O Messenger of Allah, Muhammad ibn Salah, Muhammad the son of Salah, has sent his peace and salutation upon you, has supplicated to Allah to bless you. It is delivered. So he will reply back to me innocently. And Allah will bless me or whoever will send the peace and salutation upon him ten times more. That is all stated in the sound hadith. So don't bother. You don't have to worry about asking any person and asking him 
emphasizing, please do not forget, write it down in a, in a, in a piece of paper. Because nobody would we stand before the grave of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We barely have time to say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Or, As-salamu alayka ayyuhan nabi. Then we're asked to move forward. Likewise with Abu Bakr and Umar. So calm down. Take it easy. And rejoice. Say it right now. All the viewers. Say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammad. Has been delivered immediately. Your name and the name of your father is mentioned to the Prophet Sallallahu And that's why <clears throat> the scholars say, do you want to do a favor to your father? Send the peace and the blessings upon the Prophet Sallallahu Your name will be mentioned before the Prophet and he will reply to you by your name and the name of your father. That's a great favor you do to your father, especially if he passed away to your parents as well. لا تجعلوا قبري عيدا. That was the first statement in the hadith. Do not make my grave عيد. What is the word عيد? عيد يعني from العود. It comes repeatedly, oftenly, on certain occasions. And that's why when the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم walked into Medina and he notes that the, the Jews were celebrating certain Eids and also uh, Al-Aws and Al-Khazraj started celebrating on a day. He said, what is this day for? He said, before you've come to Medina, we used to celebrate it as Eid. It comes once a year. He said, stop it. For Allah has given you two better Eids. Muslims have two Eids only. Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. Okay? From Al-Aud, it comes after every Ramadan. And Eid al-Adha comes on the 10th of uh, Dil Hijjah of every year. Okay. Based on that, the commentators of the hadith have explained this prohibition as follows. La nahi, do not. Taj'alu, make. Qabri, my grave, Eidan, a place of Eid. If you haven't seen any of that, I have and I'm going to share with what I've seen where people go to the graves of some people whom when they died, they built a masjid on top of their graves or they actually buried them. They built their graves inside of the masjid so that they go back and forth and they say that is their birthday celebration. One of the graves which I have visited during his birthday or the Eid of that person Approximately 3 million people gather to celebrate his birth. 3 million people. <laughs> that is more than the official number of Hajis last year and the years before. Correct. All those people are coming and traveling long distances, spending money, and since there is no enough hotel accommodations, Wallahi, they sleep in the streets either in tents or on the platform, in the streets like that. For three days, they celebrate the birth of that person. That happens awfully with many people. Is this something that the Prophet ﷺ recommended, approved, or applauded? Rather, it is on the contrary. The Prophet ﷺ forbade that entirely, and he warned again that. And when Ummu Salama and Ummu Habiba, they have visited um, Abyssinian and have seen what the Christians do in the churches. So they narrated that to the Prophet ﷺ before his death in order to withdraw a statement from him in this respect. What do you think? They thought the Prophet ﷺ is very sick. He may expire. We want to know what shall we do with, with his body after his death. He said those people who build a dome, and they make a tomb, they build a place of worship, and they make the grave of their righteous people, a place of celebration. He said they are the worst kind of people before Allah. That's in the sound, a hadith, plural, brothers and sisters. He said, such people, shirarul al-khalqi عند Allah. They are the worst kind of people. Because Islam came with the message of monotheism. And the peak 
of this monotheism is to invoke only one, that is God, that is the Almighty Allah, directly and without any need for intermediary, without asking somebody to be a connection between you and God. Especially if the person whom you're asking from has expired, has disconnected from life. So he is in need for your supplication, not the other way around. But we have seen, and it is currently happening. And I have captured that on videos. I have it on my phone, where people do invoke those dead in their graves. They take their family members, they take the food, they're going for a party, they're traveling for a festival. So that if there is a need that they wanted it to be fulfilled, they will go to this person in their graves and they will ask him. And if you ask them, why aren't you Muslim? Yes. So in the prayer you say, Iyaka na'budu wa Iyaka nasta'een. It is only you whom we worship and it is only you whom we seek his help. Yes, 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 yes. But those people are righteous people, very good people. They are very connected. So I'm asking them to ask from Allah. But Habibi, in fact, Allah said the other way around. He said, ask from me directly. I'm near to you. Nearer to you than your own juggler vein. Nearer to you than your own heart and your own mind, your own thoughts. So you should ask from me directly. This is what Allah loves. But people do still the opposite. And they violate the prohibition of Allah and they neglect his command in this respect. So the Prophet ﷺ warned his people, لا تجعلوا قبري عيدا. The commentators of the hadith said, O oh Allah, make my people, do not associate me in worship with you through making my grave a place of festivity. And he forbade his companions and his followers in the sound hadith again is that. All right. Another group of commentators of hadith said, the word Eid means it's a festival that comes once annually. So he said to those who have an access to visit the grave of the Prophet ﷺ, do not be harsh hearted and visit me only once a year or once whenever. If you have an access, visit me as much as you can and send your peace and salutation upon me. So subhanAllah, it's like according to the diversion meaning, it's an invitation to visit the grave of the Prophet ﷺ awfully and to send a peace and salutation upon him more often. And Allah said in the Quran, In Allah wa malaikatahu salluna ala nabi, Ya ayuha al-ladheen amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima, not just once or twice, many, many times, send your peace and salutation upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So la taj'alu qabri eidan, we learn the two different meanings. Wa sallu alayya as-salaa, from us, for Prophet Muhammad is to ask Allah, to bless him, to raise him into the highest ranks, to grant him the honor of al-wasila and the intercession. فَإِنَّ صَلَاتَكُمْ تَبْلُغُنِي حَيْثُ كُنْتُمْ For indeed, your supplication reaches me wherever you are. Beautiful hadith. Beautiful hadith. I can assure you, my dear viewers, that subhanAllah, the opposite of darkness and ignorance is knowledge and light. Imam al-Shafi'i, may Allah bless on him, said, Inna al-ilma nur. Knowledge is light. So when you study those ahadith in this kind of format, you won't ask further questions. And when somebody is going for hajj or umrah, you wouldn't bother to say, oh, please convey my salam to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, because I know when I say right now, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, it is already delivered. Okay? And I know that when I stand before the grave of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I know what I'm supposed to do. I'm not ignorant. I'm not, uh, you know, I don't get carried away because I'm emotional. I mean, it's perfectly okay. I awfully cry when I'm standing before the grave of the Prophet ﷺ. While standing in the long queue, every step when I'm taking my steps towards the grave, I cry. And my body is shivering. Okay? This is very normal. 
And then when I stand, if I have a chance to pause for a minute or two, if the guards do not, you know, force us to leave. And, and when I look, even though you don't see anything, and you imagine that the greatest man walked the earth ever, Muhammad Sallallahu is buried there. And next to him, Abu Bakr and Umar, his best two companions. It's amazing. So yes, you should tears, you get emotional. But getting emotional doesn't let you get carried away and you end up asking from the Prophet or from any of his companions. I pray for him. I ask Allah to bless him, to salute him. Then when I'm finished, I turn around and I ask from Allah. Why? Because visiting the grave of the Prophet Sallallahu sending the peace and the blessings upon him is one of the greatest means of approach, wasila. So you do what Allah said, this is an act of obedience. So this is a wasila. And Allah Almighty said in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Ya ayyuha al-ladheena amanu attaqu Allah wa bitaghu ilayhi al-wasilata la'allakum tuflihoon. Oh, who you believe, keep your duty to Allah and seek the means of approach unto him in order to be successful. Among the means of approach to Allah is doing what pleases him, is obeying him, fulfilling his commandments. So he said, Sallu alayhi. So I said, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Then Allah is happy. Seize the opportunity of Allah is happy with you and present your need and your case before Allah. Then your need will be fulfilled. How is that? That's in line with the Sharia. That's a way that pleases Allah. But turning to anyone, especially after their death, and asking them to fulfill your need, claiming that they will take your masala, and then they will present it to Allah. Why this long cut? Why do you make this long drive? While he said, I am the closest to you. Second hadith, hadith number 1402. Also collected by Abi Dawood, may Allah have mercy on him. In the sound hadith, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrated that Anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, ma min ahadin yusallimu alayya illa radda allahu alayya ruhi hatta arudda alayhi salam. He said, peace be upon him whenever someone greets me. Allah renders the soul to my body while I'm in the grave. Then I return his greeting. The hadith is very clear, crystal clear. But some people insist on, you know, seeing beyond the hadith. Like they are looking behind the veil. Yani they try to explain the meaning of that means the Prophet ﷺ is obviously alive. And in this case, he can function as a living human being. He didn't say so. It's very crystal clear. He said, whenever somebody says, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, whenever somebody greets me, you Almighty Allah gives me back the soul to enable me to greet him back, to return his greeting. Not to eat, not to drink, not to travel to Lahore, Islamabad, be shower and attend. Some people are under the impression that whenever you mention the name of the Prophet ﷺ, he arrives. And I think you've heard me before saying that. Once in Houston, Texas, when I was given the khutbah, as usual, I say in the beginning, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammad. So some people stood up. Every time I say his name, they stand up. And others said, why do you address the Prophet in the, se in, in, the, uh, in the second person, in the format of the second person? That's a format in Arabic, very eloquent, okay? Even if he's not present. No, 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 because when you do that, those people, or they, they believe the Prophet ﷺ has arrived physically and he's among us. And it is out of respect that you have to stand up because the Prophet has arrived. Oh my God, where did you bring this from? I mean, where do you learn your deen from? The Prophet doesn't leave his grave. 
He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ana awwalu man tamshakku anhu al-ardu yawm al-qiyamah. The first person to come out of the earth on the day of resurrection. He, peace be upon him, does not leave his grave under any circumstances until the day of judgment. He's lying down in his grave like every human being except for the fact that he said in one hadith, إن الله حرم على الأرض أن تأكل أجساد الأنبياء. His body is a whole and intact same day as he was buried. As if he's still alive, the body is intact, untouched. It means beautiful. Okay? Doesn't undergo the changes. Normally, the disease undergo of decaying, decomposing, stinking, smelling, and all of that. Then, he doesn't pray in the grave. He doesn't fast in the grave. He doesn't uh, perform hajj in the grave. He is lying down. Real death. But it's an honor that Allah granted him the ability to give back the salam whenever somebody greets him. But he's not alive in a sense that he's alive like us. Okay? I hope this message is clear. حتى أرد عليه السلام Only to give him back the salam To return the greeting Not for anything else He doesn't come out of his grave To assist somebody who's in need Or to attend a birthday Or a wedding Or any of that This is the belief of Ahlul Sunnah Wal Jama'ah Without adding those condiments And you know Even though Alhamdulillah Shukla Nowadays in the past, uh, first, 20, 30 years ago, before the internet was very popular and uh, everyone had an access to it, our professors, whether of the Sharia ah or of the pharmacology, they say whatever they say and their kalam, their speech is like uh, undoubted Quran. You cannot argue with them, they know better. But nowadays, you hear the khutbah of the khatib, you hear the speech, of any person, Donald Trump, he says whatever. Immediately, people will fetch previous statements or facts to belie him and say, you're wrong. So we have an access to verify any information. Why don't we use the same access to verify what is authentic and what is not in respect of our ibadah? Why do many of us still feel like they're stuck with the cultural traditions? Or what the four parents, the grandparents have taught them. With my due respect, whatever my teacher said in the past, and I verified that it wasn't true, discard it. I have what the Prophet ﷺ said. Never, ever say, uh, my teacher said, or my grandma taught me, as long as it comes in conflict with what is sound, what is narrated, and it is authentic that takes over. Last hadith before the break, hadith number 1403. An Ali ibn Abi Talib radiyallahu anhu qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, al-bakhiru man dhukirtu indahu falam yusalli alayhi. The hadith is collected by Imam Tirmidhi and it is an accepted hadith. So he says, peace be upon him, al-bakhil, the cheap, the miser, the stingy pe person, the actual stingy person is the one in whose presence my name is, is mentioned and he does not send a peace and salutation upon me. He doesn't say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay? So in any incident, when his name is mentioned, don't get bored of saying, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. What about you, Sheikh? If that is mentioned in the khutbah, the Imam says, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu sallam, he's about to say a hadith. So he quoted the name of the Prophet. He said, the Prophet sallallahu sallam said, and you taught us that in the sound hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi sallam commanded us during the speech of the Imam in Friday sermon, zip off your mouth. You don't say a word. To the extent if somebody's walking in and said, you guys, assalamu alaikum. 
do not respond to him. Keep quiet. Yeah, to the extent. Yes, to the extent. But when the Imam says the name of Muhammad, every time, even if he says it 50 times in the Friday sermon, say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, any of these forms, but without moving your tongue, do not say it out loud. Or if you move your tongue, it is okay, but do not say it out loud. Say it quietly so that the person next to you doesn't hear you. Okay? Hmm. What about if I'm in the bathroom and the adhan has been called and says, Ashhadu anna Muhammad al Rasulullah. Do not say anything because in the bathroom, while answering the call of nature, you're not supposed to mention the name of Allah or say any dhikr or any citation. Read in Quran. I came across the ayah, Muhammad al Rasulullah. Stop. Pause and say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The other ayah of Surah Al-Ahzab. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Pause. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadun wa ala ala Muhammad. Okay? Barakallahu feekum. Let's take a short break. And inshallah, after the break, we have a very interesting hadith. I consider it like a gift uh, to present it to you, inshallah. But we'll be back in a few minutes. Please stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, my dear brothers and sisters. I'm your brother Wasim Kempson. Please join me as we journey through the Quran, identifying particular ayat, verses, and stories of the prophets with a view to improving our behavior. Please join me exclusively on Huda TV on Way to Behave. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Here is our phone numbers in order landline area code 002 then 0238 Alternatively area code 002 then 0100 WhatsApp numbers area code 001 347 806 and finally area code 001 361-489-1503. Um, <clears throat> you can watch us live on uh, the social media, whether my page, M. Salah Official, or the YouTube channel, or Hoda TV YouTube channel uh, as well. The first hadith we have, which I uh, referred to before the break in the earlier segment, as it's a gift. Many of us complain that, uh, you know, sometimes my dua, my prayer is not answered. And we say it is answered, but in a way or another. But there is something to augment the supplication, to enhance its uh, chances of being accepted and of answering your supplication that is presented in this hadith. An Fudala ibn Ubaid in hadith number 1404. عن فضالة بن عبيد رضي الله عنه قال سمع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم رجلا يدعو في صلاته لم يمجد الله تعالى ولم يصلي على النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عاجل هذا ثم دعاه فقال له أو لغيره إذا صلى أحدكم فليبدأ بتحميد ربه سبحانه والثناء عليه ثم يصلي على النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ثم يدعو بعد بما شاء. In this hadith which is collected by Abu Dawood and Al-Tirmidhi in the Sunan, 
the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, heard somebody was supplicating after his prayer without praising the Almighty Allah and without supplicating Allah for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he another said, Allahumma lak alhamd, uh, and praising the Almighty Allah or sending a salutation upon the Prophet of Allah. He didn't do any of that. He just jumped into conclusion. Oh Allah, give me. Oh Allah, protect me. So the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, remarked saying, oh the man rushed. This person is very hasty. He rushed. Then he called him and he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whenever one of you would like to make dua then you should praise the almighty Allah first then glorify him in the beginning and then you should supplicate Allah for me then he may supplicate for whatever he likes the hadith is as I said is a gift it teaches us the proper way of making dua and of guaranteeing your dua to be answered you begin by Praising Allah, glorifying Allah, like you know what we say in the dua, Allahumma inna nahmaduka wa nasta'inuka wa nasta'hdika wa nasta'furuk, ya mujib ad-dua, ya ghafoor, ya rahim. These are all words of praises. You praise the Almighty Allah, you glorify Him, you exalt Him. That is the same setup in Surah Al-Fatiha, which is the greatest chapter of the Quran. The entire Surah is about supplication. But the, oh, the Almighty Allah teaches us to supplicate Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, praising Allah, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, exalting Allah, Maliki Yawm deen glorifying Allah. Then, what do you want? Ihdina al-Sirat al-Mustaqeem. So you present your supplication after praising, exalting, and glorifying the Almighty Allah. In the hadith, he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, after you praise Allah and you glorify Him, Say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad. When you present this, the praises, the glorification of Allah, then you send the peace and salutation upon the Prophet of Allah, then you make your dua, it will be accepted. Otherwise, you're rushing, you're rushing, you're rushing, you're very hasty. He said, Ajila hadha. This person is very hasty. He is rushing. You want your dua to be accepted and to encounter Qabul and Allah to deliver your need to be fulfilled, then the right setup, Alhamdulillah, was salat was salam ala Rasulillah. Even when we enter the masjid and upon leaving the masjid, Alhamdulillah, was salam ala Rasulillah, Allahumma gfir li dhunubi wa iftah li abwaba rahmatik, Allahumma gfir li dhunubi wa iftah li abwaba fadlik, upon leaving and so on. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Safar from Tajikistan. Assalamu alaikum. <coughs> alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. How are you, Shaykh? I'm doing great, alhamdulillah. What about you? Yeah, hey, alhamdulillah, I'm good. Thank you so much. I was waiting to, uh, to find uh, this great opportunity to ask you a question. Welcome to the program. Go ahead, uh, Safar. Yeah, I have one question, actually. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Uh, can you hear me, Shaykh? Yes, I can. <coughs> Go ahead, please. Yeah, my question is, uh, as we know, we Muslims need to follow the way of Rasulullah and the way of Quran. Okay. But in our country, unfortunately, right now, these days, if we want to follow these ways, we cannot follow these ways. Now, right now, we see in our country a thousand people, th thousand Muslims who follow Quran and Sunnah, they are in prison right now. They just directly send them to prison mm. without hasad and hisab. They give them 10 years, 15 years. It's so hard for us. We cannot follow the... Yes. We, we, we cannot follow the way of uh, Quran and the Sunnah. We just... Every, most people just here following the bid'ah that, like this. There is no authentic hadith. They're just following them like blindly. We cannot follow the authentic hadith. We cannot follow the Quran. If you do it, they will say that you are joining to some groups. They will just send you to prison. Could you please give us some explanation? What can we do in this country? Can we move to other country? What is your suggestion, please? Okay, Jazakallah khayran. Safar from Tajikistan. 
May Allah bless you and make it easy for you and for all of us because not only in your country, this is a, a common dilemma that the practicing Muslims are going through. You find the true scholars and the true practicing uh, Muslims are put behind bars. Um, and don't forget that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself was imprisoned and all his companions too for three years and they were boycott by the rest of people. But let's talk about that after this call. Assalamu alaikum. Omar from Sri Lanka. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam, Shaykh. I hope you're keeping fine. Yes, alhamdulillah, Akhi. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, Shaykh, I have uh, one question related to uh, Bida activities uh, performing zikr. Uh, first one uh, is it permissible? to perform a fixed set of zikr on a daily basis. The number is self, uh, uh, it's, there's no fixed, uh, fixed in the sense, it's a self uh, agreed fixed number. For example, subhanallah wa bihamdihi 100 times, then kul hu allah wa had the surah 100 times plus so on. A self collected uh, uh, zikr. And number two, is it permissible to perform zikr and allocate uh, and request Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allocate them to my living parents? Is it allowed? That's all. Thank you, Omar from Sri Lanka. Assalamu alaikum. Ahmed from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Go ahead, Ahmed. Uh, if we recite the uh, Verses in which we have to send blessings to Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. If the if the Imam reads that verse, does he have to pause? You mean in the salah? In the salah, if the Imam reads the words of in which we have to send blessings. Okay. All right. Does the Imam have to pause? Okay. Barakallahu fi. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Anas from Egypt. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Our Sheikh Dr. Muhammad, how are you? I'm doing great, Akhi. Thank you for asking. And you? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Uh, Sheikh, I have only one question. My question is um, there's a lot of people, uh, when you use tasbih, for example, if you want to make tasbih or Tahmid or any remembers sometimes we uh, sometimes we use you know tas rather than using uh, our finger. So is it on innovation if I use my if I use tas rather than my finger? Is it innovation? Is it bid'ah? Are it's you asking like about using the beads? Huh? You're asking about using the beads. Yeah, I mean uh, saying zikr using tas. Tasbih. Okay. Yeah. What, what are you doing, Anas? Where are you originally from? What are you doing in Egypt? What is it? Where are you originally from? Actually, I know I'm in Egypt. I'm originally I'm from Ethiopia. I see. Okay. All right, Anas. Yeah. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Maya from the USA. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Maya, Assalamu Alaikum. Yeah, Assalamu Alaikum Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh. Alaikum Assalam Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh. How are you, Sheikh? I'm doing fine, Alhamdulillah. And you, Sister Maya? Alhamdulillah. Yes, I have two questions in mind. Sure. Um, I have missed uh, so many days from Ramadan and um, I uh, finished them um, and now I am on my um, doing the sixth day of Shawwal, but I still I still owe one day. So I was wondering, should I fast it tomorrow to complete it, or I can wait until this coming Thursday to to complete it to have the double reward? Okay. And my second question is that here um, since the kids are not going to school so the government has uh, sent like some 
card is like a food stamp card, but they have sent those for the kids who are not going to school to compensate for the missed lunches that they have been having in school to help the families. Mm. And I was wondering, is that allowed for us to use those food, so those cards or, because I mean, I'm, I'm still feeding my kids even if they don't give us those cards, so. so uh, Maya, uh, I would appreciate if you can rephrase your second question. Okay, um, I, I was saying that uh, here in the US, they have um, um, sent us those food cards to help the kids for the lunches that they have been missing at school okay. to help the families for the pandemic. And I was wondering if as Muslim we are allowed to use this, those cards. I have put already the money so, in, in, on the card and they say we have 12 months to spend it uh, for every day, the lunches. I have put like five something for every day so to, to use it. Yes, I, But I'm I just saying it, that it. since- Is it like food stamps? Right? No, it's not food stamp because I, I don't I don't I don't use food stamp. Not it's just a card. They say. No, not necessarily. Okay. It is instead of taking the food uh, at the school, they give them cards or vouchers. It's called food stamp, so that they can purchase food or whatever from the stores outside since they are not in the school. Am I correct? All right. Exactly. Okay. Yes, yes. it is permissible. Enjoy it. Okay. Even okay. though, even though, guys, like, uh, we don't... Uh, you guys huh? pay taxes. You guys pay taxes. Mm -hmm. And the government is compensating the people during the pandemic. The government is like the family father. So they give you something. You didn't fake any documents to say I'm eligible. They're giving all the students, enjoy it, take it. It's permissible. Okay? Okay. okay. Yeah, and I would say uh, with regards to fasting, it would be best if you make it Mondays and Thursdays with the intention of hitting the days uh, which are more blessed so that you will get the reward of coinciding the Sunnah and meanwhile making you miss fasting. Assalamu alaikum. Ahmed from Bangladesh. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. How are you? Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the program, Ahmed. How's your family, Sheikh? Everybody is doing great, alhamdulillah, by the grace of Allah. Thank you for asking, Akhi. Alhamdulillah. Sheikh, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, whenever I uh, recite this dua, I cry. You know, Sheikh, uh, the dua is in English, and it says, I bear witness that you are indeed the messenger of Allah, that, that you convey the message and fulfill the trust and mm -hmm. advise the ummah and and so on, Sheikh. I want to know that, Sheikh, if I can recite this dua in my prayer in Arabic. Normally, this dua is recited like if you're addressing the Prophet وسلم, as a second person, like if you're giving salam right in front of his grave. Or normally, the khatib, while giving the khutbah, he says, Ashhadu annaka ballagta risala wa addayta al amana wa kashafta al ghumma wa maha Allah bika al ghumma. This is the interpretation of what you just said in, uh, in English. And you can recite it whenever, no problem, okay? We're coming, inshallah, if we don't get to address it in this episode, it will be the next episode, the different words and wording of sending the peace and salutation upon Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Thank you, Ahmed from Bangladesh. Umar from Sri Lanka. Um, no, uh, Tajikistan first, Safar. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, uh, Islam started off as a very strange message among the people. And the adherents of Islam, they seem strangers in the community. It's a terrible community, disbelieving people. Uh, they practice all the odds and all the evil practices and the illicit relationship. They steal, they drink, they commit adultery, fornication, homosexuality, and all of that. Th that was a society. Then when a nice person comes inviting people for a reform, for monotheism, they all oppose him. So when a few people start following this person, whether it was Prophet Muhammad or the prophets before him, or the followers of the Prophet, the reformers, the dua, the muslihun, then they put him under the spot. 
if they see his achievement success in inviting people, they target him. They can do all the terrible things to him. They plot against him. Allah stated that in the Quran. He said in Surah Al-Anfal, وَإِذْ يَمْكُرُ بِكَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لِيُثْبِتُوكَ أَوْ يَقْتُلُوكَ أَوْ يُخْرِجُوكَ وَيَمْكُرُونَ أَمْكُرُ اللَّهِ No doubt that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is better than all of us. And he is the dearest and the most beloved to Allah. Yet Allah has recorded in the Quran how much the disbelievers plotted against him. What was he doing? He was doing nothing but good things. They plotted against him to arrest him, to imprison him, to kill him, or even to exile him. You know, and if this is the case, and the people of innovations and the people of disbelief are against you, that's a sign that you are on the right track. So be patient. You know that the Prophet وسلم, for 13 years after he was commissioned with the Nubuwa, they didn't have masjid. They couldn't pray in congregation. They couldn't recite Quran in public. They used to hide, sneak into Darul Arqam in order to learn and teach his companions. You know that, right? And this is a messenger of Allah. We are living in a similar era where most of the true dua are put behind bars. And the true, yesterday there was a young man who called from Malaysia and he said that his father said, if you grow your beard, I'll kick you out of my house and I will shave it by my own hand. And the boy was doing nothing other than trying to imitate the Prophet You know, if the same boy was a smoker or smoking weed or has a girlfriend and he kept a beard, his dad wouldn't dare to tell him that. Why? Because he know that he's crook. He's going to stray, so it's a fashion. If he's growing it as a fashion, it's okay. But if he's imitating the messenger, the opposition comes from one's own parents. Subhanallah. And this is the test. This is a real trial. May Allah keep us steadfast on the straight path. Umar from Sri Lanka. Leave those people alone. And when you read through, like if you have the book of the fortress of the Muslim, and you know that the Prophet ﷺ said, you recite this how much in the morning, and how much in the evening, and you stick to it, fine. Somebody else, as he said, self-made figures, numbers, and supplications. I don't care about them. I do not follow them. No matter how much they say it's cool, it's nice, it's better, and it works, I don't care. Follow and do not innovate. Bottom line, do not waste your time. Okay? And whenever you recite dhikr, can I uh, grant the word of my recitation of dhikr or Quran to my living parents? Living or dead. After you recite your adhkar, after you send the salutation upon the Prophet, after you read Quran, you want to benefit your parents, living or dead? Supplicate for them. Ask Allah to bless them after finishing your recitation. Ahmed from the KSA. Can one send the salutation upon the Prophet in the prayer like he says, the Imam says, إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين أمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما. He's reciting that in the Quran. Can he pause to say, Allah مصلي على محمد وعلى محمد? Yes, of course, because the hadith indicated so. Okay. Anas from Ethiopia, and currently in Egypt, says, using the beads to make tasbih is it permissible? Yes, it is permissible. Better than that is to make the tasbih on your finger joints, okay? So, for instance, after every salah, you need to make the 33 times tasbih, tahmeed, takbir, make it on your finger joints. Then afterward, the morning adhkar, the evening adhkar, or as you're walking or jogging or exercising and holding the tasbih and making dhikr, it is permissible. It is permissible. We've reached the end of uh, this episode, brothers and sisters. I ask the Almighty Allah, to bless us all and to grant us forgiveness for our sins, to pardon us and to lift this calamity of the COVID-19, the pandemic disease from all of us to keep us safe and sound. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send our peace and salutation upon his most beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The one and only glory to him. Keep warning humans to be the best 
and give his best religion to them. Allah, our God, is the greatest. The one and only glory to him. He wanted humans to be the best and give his best religion to them. So why did they ignore that? Forgetting all about him in paradise. Worshipping cows, fire and stones. Selling the best with the cheapest price. So why did they ignore that? Forgetting all about hell and paradise. Worshipping cows, fire and stones. Selling their best with the cheapest price.